Hi, Amy. Tell us about your new book, Spellbound. Hi, Carol. Um, well, Spellbound is the story of a witch called Belle, who's unfortunately not very good at magic, and she has a crush on her neighbour, Nick, and casts a spell that doesn't quite go right. And then hijinks ensue, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about why you chose a witch for your, your heron to be a witch. What led you to make that choice? I, it's a good question. I'm not entirely sure, actually. I liked the idea of, um, of her being a little bit unusual, a little bit unique. Um, but I didn't want to build a whole new world, you know, with different rules. So to me, the fact that she's a witch is not really that important to her character. It just kind of sparks some of the events that happen that, that bring her and Nick together. And allows for magic to go wrong or right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Sorry, I have to pause there. Oh. I couldn't see my question. Sorry about that. Um, I also thought that quite apart from the magic gone wrong, I felt that Spellbound is really a good old-fashioned love story in many senses with Nick, the gorgeous hero. And uh, did, do, do, Is that what you set out to write? Yes, absolutely. It is definitely boy meets girl and, and they overcome obstacles to find true love. Um, I think um, what I liked about the story as I was writing it was that both Nick and Belle give each other different ways of seeing the world. They, um, you know, Nick gets to see a, a magical world. Belle gets to see the world um, through Nick's eyes, um, and to see herself through Nick's eyes as well, which is very important. So, you know, I think that there's some of the traditional elements of a of a good old-fashioned love story. Has Nick got all the qualities of kind of your idea of a perfect man? Or <laughs> I think he's got a few. Yes. <laughs> what are they? Um, look, I think uh, he's very interested in Belle. He's um, very charming. He has good manners. I think, you know, good manners is a highly underrated um, characteristic in, in men. Um, I, think, I think his genuine interest in Belle is really what makes him um, so appealing because he sees her for who she truly is and um, helps her to find her true self again. There's some pretty steamy scenes in Spellbound, which everyone's talking about and enjoying. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so Belle has a pretty healthy sexual appetite, so clearly you were comfortable with writing, casting your hair in, in this light. Yeah, look, I think um, she just needed to see herself a little differently um, to open up that side of her life again. Um, I think, you know, some of her history, her past had maybe... Um, switched off that side of her a little bit and when it gets switched back on again she's um ready and raring to go <laughs> <laughs> do you um it, it seems you have an ease there's a there was a kind of a, a comfortable ease with the way you wrote those scenes mm -hmm. um is that actually true in reality or do you find it tough to write love making scenes Look, I think they're, it's like writing any scene. Sometimes they come easily and sometimes you have to work a little bit harder with them. Um, for me, the uh, essence of a really good love scene is that um, it's, it's really integral to the plot, that it um, furthers your understanding of the characters, that you learn something about either the, the people or the situation that they're in through that process. Um, and, you know little bit of spice doesn't hurt either so <laughs> no I, I quite enjoy having books that delve into that that side of um of life I think um whenever I read romances that sort of you know close the bedroom door and then start again the next morning I feel a little bit cheated <laughs> I, I like to know what happens behind the bedroom door but Belle also has some um, as you just referred to her history she does have a few self-esteem problems doesn't she so we meet her at a stage in her life where she's feeling not great about herself that's right um, and I think that's part of what um, her encounter with Nick helps her to realise he doesn't necessarily um, make that happen but she comes to that conclusion with some I guess prompting from him um, I think 
you know, a lot of people in their romantic history have perhaps been in relationships that left them feeling a bit battered and worn. Um, and the trick is, you know, to kind of um, get up and pick yourself up and, and dust off and, and try again. And um, and you're right, we meet Belle at that point in her life where she's feeling a bit bit battered by love and, uh, and has to find a new way to embrace it again. Aunt Agatha is a great character. I loved her. Auntie Gertrude. Gertrude, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Agatha is quite a good name for an auntie yes. as well. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> Aunt Gertrude, uh, yeah, she she's a quirky old little bird. I think um, I, I she's very she's a character that's very uh, dynamically pictured in my mind. I can see her in my mind mind's eye in bright Technicolor um, with her jangling beads, and you know she's wearing way too much jewellery and has uh, you know these brightly coloured caftans on, and that all totally clash in their colours, um, but. Yeah, so she's she's someone who's been around the block a few times and uh, and knows what to do. And she's of course a very um, expert witch as well because she's the, one of the lecturers at the Magic Academy that Belle went to, and she's also Belle's godmother. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, and she actually helps her out emotionally with a lot of her. She does. Problems, kind of looks after her. She's a bit of a mentor, and I think um, she definitely believes in that saying of you know not not telling someone what to do but perhaps prompting them so they can find out for themselves mm-hmm. she doesn't necessarily give Belle all the clue or, you know all the information she just gives her some clues mm-hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your life outside of writing what else do you are you passionate about what other things do you do well um, unfortunately I'm not writing full-time at, at this point yet my background is in um, PR and corporate communications uh, so I've done lots of writing in my in my career, uh, but mostly you know speeches for CEOs and press releases and <laughs> kind of stuff like that that doesn't have any kissing, let alone spicy sex scenes in it. Um, so writing's always been kind of part of my life, I suppose, and um, only really in the last few years that I've I've embraced trying to write some fiction. Um, so I'm I'm passionate about uh, about that career. I still very much enjoy it, and uh, and I'm deeply involved in professional associations and and in training other people and mentoring um, new up and comers in in that industry. Um, I'm also a volunteer with a couple of um, charitable organisations. Um, I volunteer in a soup kitchen, so I just basically like to keep busy. Mm. And I believe there might be a sequel to Spellbound or a second one on its yes, way? Yes, yes, quite exciting news. Um, we're going to get to meet another one of Aunt Gertrude's goddaughters, um, a lady called Mel, who she's um, she's actually a bit more of an expert than than Belle. She's sort of graduated with honours from the Magic Academy, so she's she's got her skills down pat. Um, but she's going to kind of find herself a little bit undone when she meets uh, her new man. Ah, so, excellent! Hmm. Can't wait. Yeah, it's thanks great. very much. Marissa. You're welcome, Carol. Thank you.